Welcome to Influential Entrepreneurs, bringing you interviews with elite business leaders and experts, sharing tips and strategies for elevating your business to the next level. Here's your host, Mike Saunders. Hello and welcome to this episode of Influential Entrepreneurs. This is Mike Saunders, the Authority Positioning Coach. Today we have back with us Stephen Michael England, who's the president of Capstone Estate Planning, and we'll be talking about fees and fiduciary relationships. Stephen, welcome back to the program. Well, thanks for having me, Mike. Hey, so I know that uh, I'm a big uh, believer in, uh, or, or I like to observe things where it's like, hey, when you say this word, what do you think? When you say this word, what, what does it make you feel? And the word fees, ugh. How many times do we read our cell phone bill, our power bill, you know, and, and go, what is this? And you just throw your hands up going, I'm just feed to death and fees all over the place. So this is a huge factor of leakage in finances. So I'm excited to talk about this and then how you uh, correlate that in with dealing with your your clients in a uh, uh, equitable relationship. So let's get started first with, um, you mentioned fiduciary relationship. What Let's define fiduciary. What is a fiduciary and why do clients uh, need to understand what it is and why their advisor must be a fiduciary? Well, let me first tell you that, first of all, I am not a fiduciary. I just want to tell you that up front. I'm 65 years old. I started in the business in 1982 and do you know, Mike, when I started and at that time and for a long time, there was no such thing as a fiduciary. So this is a yeah. newer phenomenon. I'm not sure when it started. A fiduciary is where an advisor and they have to you know, be licensed to be a fiduciary, but they legally have to put the, your interests. They legally have to put your interests above their own on mm. these investment decisions. So. It, it, it's been marketed quite well, but I love this story of a man I talked to who is just a few years older than me who lived down in Texas. And he said, Steve, he said, I need a fiduciary. He said, I don't know what a fiduciary is, but <laughs> I need a fiduciary. And I love that. But he knew he needed a fiduciary. And yes, you do need a fiduciary because they legally have to put your interests yeah. ahead of their own. And many advisors that aren't, they don't have that same level of responsibility. So it's the highest level of care to the consumer. And I work with several lead fiduciaries. They're, you know, some of the top fiduciaries in the United States. And I try to match up our people with fiduciaries. So I'm part of a team. Perfect. And I'm a coordinator. But yes, you need a fiduciary today. And if yep. you don't have one as part of the team, then you're with the wrong group. And the other thing that you mentioned was fees. Well, the fee world has changed, Mike. So um, I would compare this to almost like to real estate commission. For years and years, uh, real estate commissions stayed about the same as five or six percent. And nowadays you see groups do this exact same service, same advertising, same, really almost the same thing for maybe half the cost. And so real estate commissions and even some of the laws are changing, but real estate commissions and fees are coming down. And so mm -hmm. the same thing on in the investment area. There are so many groups, though, that are still under the old way of doing business and they charge. They charge quite a bit, so they may have their management fee, and many times they put you in mutual funds, and there's mutual fund fees, and then sometimes there's variable annuities, and those have fees upon fees upon fees. So you have um, a big difference between some of the – I'm not sure if I'm supposed to name names, but if you had like a T. Rowe Price or a Vanguard or Fidelity or Schwab – some of these big groups have very low fee structures. Now, none of them do business for free. I don't think any of them are nonprofit companies. They all make a profit. So there'll be some fee somewhere. And But the some of the traditional money management groups and their layers of management and just how they're structured, offices, et cetera, they have probably double the fees. and. So 
we're seeing that a lot of people are really fee conscious and they're very smart in doing so because fees can make a 30 to 40 percent difference in the growth of your money yeah wow it's it's amazing you wouldn't think it was that high but if but a a, a, a fees can make a huge difference uh in your retirement plan. So the way I look at it is, and I've looked at it this way ever since really we had the pandemic, is that some people are working in a fashion where they can have lower fees. We have in our group and where we keep our costs down so we can keep the costs low for the consumer. And then when you're dealing with a fiduciary, you're paying, paying a flat fee. You're not you know, paying every time that you make changes and buy and sell and all yeah. that. So they, you know, they're making money. The fiduciary is making money when you make money. So if you make money, they're making money. You're on yeah, the same. back because back in the old days, you know, the quote unquote stockbroker, when they call you up with that hot idea and move money into whatever that it is, then it's shaving off a little bit of commissions off of that because they get paid. And then next week they got another idea because they keep generating commissions. So that's a good point there. And But then the other fees, if you can look at and understand fees, that's going to really help save like you said, 30, 20 to 30% or whatever that number is, that could be monstrous over time. Well, it, I see it all the time because we we do evaluations that uh, we call it an EKG, but it, it tells you what the fees are, the stated fees and the hidden fees, but you know what the real fees are. And one was just completed uh, from a very prominent person who retired from the post office. And the company that he was with, which is a household name, and they have offices on every in every nook and cranny, I won't mention their name, but his total fees were approximately twenty four thousand a year, hmm. and so we're talking about the the fees from the investment group, and then they had the mutual fund fees. Right, and they use mostly mutual funds. And then he had several variable annuities, and the variable annuities have mortality and expense fees and other fees. They're the probably the highest fees. So when you put all that together, it was almost twenty four thousand a year. And the fiduciary that I had set them up with quoted them for the same. It was actually they would have higher returns, less risk and volatility, et cetera, et cetera. But just on the fees alone. He was forty five hundred dollars compared to twenty four thousand. Wow. Now I know that's a kind of a you know uh, an example that's I guess exaggerated, but it's a true one. But on but all the time I see fees in half. So if someone was paying ten thousand a year, they could do it for five. Or um, and then the other thing that I noticed, Mike, is that a lot of people, when they do this evaluation, it shows their fees. They didn't realize you could see from their reaction. They did not realize they were paying that much. Well, because here's something that jumps into my mind. Up. That that scenario that you mentioned about the whatever, 24,000 or whatever that one is. I, and I don't care to know exact numbers, of course, but hypothetically, that person may have been told or looked at a statement of, hey, your your um, rate of return on your portfolio last year was X, whatever that rate of return number is. But in reality, the net return was way less because of those 24000 in fees. So the client is hearing in their ears and seeing with their eyes and going, oh, I, I made a rate of return of whatever that bigger number is because that's what the the the, port, the the portfolio brought in. But then the true net, net, net goes in their back pocket, so to speak, was way less. And when you look at that rate of return, it probably would be paltry. It's so true. And then some of the fees, it's not the client's fault, but they don't really show up. So they're they're We call them hidden fees. But um, can you imagine if, you know, what I say is it's easy to risk somebody else's money, especially, you know, when you're getting paid to do it. And what if you're getting paid to do it when you're losing them money? And that does happen. Like in 2022, you know, this has been a great year, but in 2022, a, a lot of people lost 20 to 25 percent and they may have been paying high fees, but yet they were still losing money. So 
And what we try to do with the testing is just make sure people are paying uh, the the low fees under today's uh, you know com- most competitive plans. Because if you're yes. not looking at it, there are still I would say half the investment world is still under. They're kind of like the real estate group where they're still charging that five or six percent, and then you have the other maybe half where they're doing it the newer way and they're charging the lower fees. But you need to know uh, what your fees are, and it can have a big difference on your returns because they're saying it can affect 30 to 40 percent of, mm. of the growth on your money, which it, it's it sounds very high, but that's how the math works out. It's really amazing. You know, so how do you balance getting the best advice, but not paying those exorbitant fees? Well, I think you know the fact is you 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 have some people want to do everything. I think they some people try to do it themselves, and you there are some groups where you can just call in. You have an eight hundred number. You get a different person each time they can help you. The fees are lower, but I really think you need a fiduciary and you need a person that you can have a relationship with that you can call and they'll do reviews and try to fit a plan to you, but you definitely need low fees. So I think you need, you need a test to find out what you're paying. Can you pay less? What's, you know, what's a fair price for what you're getting. And then on top of that, for getting the fees, do you have a, a competitive program and does it fit you as far as, you know, the, the uh, risk and volatility, but far too many people today do not have what I call the full plan. And that's because no one has ever talked to them about things like tax strategies and how do you get the money over to the tax free Roth and how do you do all that? Or how do you, ensure that your children don't end up with, you know, a ticking tax time bomb and there's a big tax to them. And what happens, you know, if I need money because I have serious illness and I need care and all those kind of things, social security planning. So there's a lot of planning that goes into it, which is why I think you need a team and you certainly need a fiduciary on that team. So it's more than just about investments. It's really about financial planning. Yeah, holistic, the whole picture. You know, I want to go a little bit deeper on something you said about the fiduciary's responsibility is they're legally obligated to give you the best advice. What would it look like if a client didn't get that best advice? Because I would wonder that, you know, typically someone would go, oh, you just told me to get into some investment that went horribly south. But I think that it's a little bit deeper than that, where it's like, um, you know, a fiduciary needs to give someone all of the picture and it might not be some catastrophic negative thing. It might just be you didn't give them the full array of options for them. Well, that's true. A fiduciary is supposed to cover all these. They call it style boxes, all the different boxes so that you're well diversified and they're supposed to pick the best of the best. So if you had one group and they only use certain types of funds or certain programs because they're getting a kickback, they're getting money from that group and they just use them, they're supposed to, uh, you know, a fiduciary is supposed to look for five star, the best of the best in each category. Mm -hmm. So it, it makes a big difference in what they're coming up with. So Mike, if you looked at it this way, if, if, if we, if I charged you a fee, and I'm not the fiduciary, but let's just say a fiduciary charged you the fee and you were okay with the fee that they were being charged and their job for that fee was to find the best plan to fit you and it was all five-star and it covered every style box and it also covered the planning, then that could potentially be a very good plan. But if you had something that's more cookie-cutter where it's designed by a group really because it's what they want to put you in and the, they have they want to sell their funds or they have special relationship with just certain groups mm. and there's no one group that's that's the best in every category so you need someone that really can put it together with your best interest and that's really what a fiduciary does so it, it 
it, it's really needed. When you have one that isn't, what tends to happen is they put the, their own interests above yours. That's yep. what happens. Because they know they got a little bit better compensation on this versus the other one or whatever. It's not necessarily that you're going to take a horrible hit. It might just be um, the advisor is getting something better. So that that really clears it up a lot. And the bottom line is it's legally their responsibility. So it's not just like, oh, just keep it in mind. When you work with a fiduciary like who's on your team, um, now all of a sudden they're like, I, I have to do this or else I'm in big trouble. So let's talk a little bit more about that team. You know, because Stephen England is a smart guy, but you don't know everything about everything. And if you can bring in experts to fill in the gaps and provide that great overall comprehensive service to your clients, that team uh, approach really is powerful. You know, Mike, when you said, I don't know everything, you know, my wife, Cindy, who I've been married to 35 years, she tells me that I don't know everything. <laughs> right. And, and she'll say, listen to your wife. But uh, no, it's true. Today, you need a team. Uh, I've been in the business a long time, so I have a lot of, um, I've seen a lot of things. I have a lot of experience, but I don't have, I'm not a fiduciary. Uh, I don't do that part. So to me, you need someone such as myself who's seen a lot. Uh, you certainly, you know, the, the worst thing that you can do is have someone that's, let's say, younger trying to design something that they would pick out for them. And here you are in retirement. They might want to yeah. do things a little different. You think about, you know, decisions and how your children do things versus what you want. So you want, you, you know, I'm in, I'm at the age where of most of the people that I talk to. So I under, I understand what they, what they want and, and I can relate to them. Let's put it that way, but you need a fiduciary. You may need uh you know, estate planning. So there may need to be for, let's say, legal documents, an attorney brought in or a tax, uh, a CPA or a tax specialist brought in or other professionals. So you need someone who can put it together. Uh, but on the investment side, you certainly today need a fiduciary. And what we see is that it's, it's uh, fiduciaries are talked about but still, I would say 70 percent of the people I talk to are dealing with people that, um, you know, for instance, Mike, if they're in a 401k plan at work and or they still have a 401k, they they can't give them investment advice. So they have yeah. no one helping them. And then you have money management groups who they have the licenses to do stocks, bonds, mutual funds, and put them in certain things, but they're not fiduciaries and the company is not mm -hmm. set up to work in that fashion. So you really need someone who's a fiduciary, but is really on the independent channel. So they can, they have access to everything that exists out there and they can put together, that's, you know, an A that's plus another plus. big one. I, um, I came out of the mortgage industry and I know that it's probably the exact same in what you are mentioning there. If you worked for a, a bank, let's say you only have a certain number of products to offer and you might be sitting in front of someone needing a certain mortgage loan that you cannot offer, but you know, the independent broker down the road, they can do anything. So you as, as a independent advisor, you're not captive and you're not, um, uh, structuring certain recommendations only on what you can offer through your captive provider. Stephen England can provide anything that the client needs because you're independent. I think that's a pretty big uh, aha for people to realize. Right. So as an example, and you could look at any type of, uh, you know, uh, I've looked at uh, either auto homeowners insurance or car insurance or anything. And it's amazing. If you shop around, you can see diff big differences, but there are some groups that, so your advisor could be, you know, the best person in the world, but if they work for a certain company, their hands are tied by the company and what they have access to. And you'd be very surprised, and the average consumer would not know, that a lot of investment groups maybe only have access to half of what's out there in the marketplace wow. for investments. And so they're not shopping around. But, for instance, on my end, if someone needs income and they want a pension-type guaranteed income, and I shop for that. I can shop with every company out there. So the only thing that limits me is I'm going to pick a high quality company. But 
So that's going to be the standard. But within that, all the high quality A rated companies, we're going to try to find the highest income, the highest guaranteed income. And can you imagine if I only had one or two? So right. you have to you have to have, be independent and have everything available on the fiduciary side and then on the planning side. And you would be surprised if there's a very small percentage, maybe 20, 30 percent of advisors that really have access to everything that exists. Mm. Yes, that's, you know, and, and I think that, you know, the old saying, I'm sure there's a, a freeze for this, but if you'll recognize it, but you don't know what you don't know. And I think some people just don't realize what you just said. They just think they're financial guy or gal that works at whatever big name, whatever. They don't realize that there could be potentially some limitations. So having that independent approach, having that team approach, having fiduciaries on the team that are legally obligated to do the right thing for you or else, that kind of keeps those protections in place for the client. I really think that's a big piece that people are not picking up on. It, it really does, Mike. And, you know, it, it, it's for retirement planning, uh, which also includes estate planning, it, it's not as simple as, I'm making money. I'm not. Uh, this is my risk. And, and sometimes people don't even know that. But so you do have to have a fiduciary to pick five, have, you know, low costs and all that. But there's other things that go with your planning that the average advisor that's out there never asks the client because they don't do planning. For instance, mm -hmm. Are they making the most money over three, five, and 10 years? So you might be having a great year, but are you making money consistently over those periods of time? What about the risk and volatility on your life savings? You know, what's the potential for, you know, how much up, how much down? The fees, and do you have a fiduciary relationship? What about retirement income? Is your plan designed and set up so that you can take income if the market's not, you know, there? And then the the Roth conversion strategy, do you have one in place? Are you minimizing taxes? Are you filling your tax bracket? And then what's your plan if you had a serious illness or catastrophic or something happened? I mean, it's expensive. It can wipe anyone else. So do you have a how do you pay for that? And then uh, you want to minimize taxes, not only in your lifetime, but if something happens to you, you don't want a tax bomb to your to your wife or your children or grandchildren. So you think, I just went through those questions because I have asked clients those questions and I've had people say to me, well, my broker advisor never asked me those questions. So to me, wow. you have to have a fiduciary relationship. But where I come in is on the planning to make sure those questions are being addressed and those things are built into your plan. Nothing's perfect. There's no silver bullet to some serious problems, but you have to plan for all these things. It's not just how much money am I making? It's not that yeah. simple. And it kind of reminds me of like when you play chess and you make a move and you keep your finger on it, you're looking around like, should this, should this be my move? And, and then when you take your finger off, okay, now it's the move. Well, with the team approach, with you being kind of like the coach or quarterback of, of the whole team and you're, you're coordinating with maybe people you're bringing in for the client, maybe it's legal or maybe it's tax, maybe you're coordinating with their current, uh, um, people, their professionals, but you're making sure that each one of these recommendations for their retirement plan doesn't have a negative domino effect with the rest of their team. So you don't want to create a legal issue or a tax issue or vice versa. So I think that's a huge thing to remember too. You know, Stephen England has taken the 30,000 foot view, making these recommendations for what they need, but making sure it fits in with everything else they've got going on. It's so true. And it's, 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 you know, if you have people that have hundreds of millions of dollars and they have, they're in a family office practice, then they have all these advisors and they work together. But the, for the average person, the upper middle income or the person that's, you know, saved hard and has some money, they have an advisor. But really, the planning, they just haven't had the planning yes. and they don't know how to tie it together. And that's why I work with, you know, the, the fiduciaries I work with are 
you know, late thirties, early forties, and I'm 65. So I've seen some things. They will not pull yep. the wool over my eye. Eyes. Yeah, <laughs> you, you've, you've got their back. You've got the client's back to make sure that what's being recommended, you know, you because just kind of like I remember a commercial back in the day. It's like, a, um, I've seen a thing or two. Well, you've seen like this recommendation. Uh, you know what? One time we did it this way and this happened. So let's go ahead and make sure that we're doing it that way. So I think that's a, a huge piece, not, not to dissuade people from ever working with someone with less experience. But when, when you're 65 and you've got 30 years plus in the industry, you've seen a thing or two. And that's a, yeah, that's the, an the only piece. thing they asked me, Mike, is like, how long are you going to do this, Steve? You know, yep. because <laughs> you're going to be here. But you asked my wife, this is what I do. This is what I love. Yeah. And I'm beholden to my clients. I return phone calls. I treat them. I'd like to be treated. So it's, I guess you'd call it boutique. I don't know what the word is, but it's, I have some very, very close long-term relationships and I just love the people I work with. So yeah. it, it's. Well, you, you said a keyword relationship. You, you, you build relationships. You're not looking at, you know, people aren't dealing with a robo advisor where it's like, set them up, knock them down. Here's your plan. See you later. Goodbye. You're building long term relationships. I resonate with that. That's how I treat my business. And I think that your clients can just tell that in just how, how that you're, you're, interacting with them. So that is just spectacular. So I think, uh, Stephen, if this is a, 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 a concern for some people to go, ooh, maybe I need to make sure that I'm getting as little fees as possible to make sure my returns are strong and working with a, a team that has my best interest at heart, what's the best way that someone can um, reach out and connect with you? They can email me at steve at capstoneestateplanning.com. Excellent. Well, I will also put the link to your website in the show notes. And thank you so much for coming back on. This has been a real pleasure talking with you today. Thanks so much, Mike. Great to talk. You've been listening to Influential Entrepreneurs with Mike Saunders. To learn more about the resources mentioned on today's show or listen to past episodes, visit www.influentialentrepreneursradio.com.